Hello and welcome to Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast. This is either episode one of season two or like a interstitial, it might be meaning part two. My name is Michael Forrest. And I'm Ivanka Magic. And well, yeah, what do you want to well, start I, on I there? think I, I think I need to start a bit about talking about what we might do about it. This week, we're going to figure out what we're going to do. And we may even make a commitment. And we may even decide that season two, this is the first episode of season two. And season two is season do. <laughs> right? And I just coined that in my brain right then. <laughs> oh, it's so cheesy. Season do of Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast. <laughs> But no, I think I think and if you you're know, still listening, let's do it. It's some music. <laughs> it is strange being in this room, isn't it? It is in a slightly different room, knowing that someone's listening to us. Yeah, actually live. <laughs> like someone's in the next room. He's moved into the next room. Uh, we're probably freaking out like, <laughs> freaking weirdos we're being, we're being listened to yeah um, which even though it's a podcast the idea of somebody listen to, listening to us as we're recording well, it's it's they're hearing, is someone hearing all the bits that I edit out so I don't <laughs> yeah, want anyone to hear the, the person that hears how stupid we really sound before exactly. Michael fixes the, it the veil is lifted <laughs> yeah it's true um, uh, yeah, so, yeah I haven't yeah, got well, any ideas let's, yet. we're going to try and figure out we literally don't know what we're going to do literally I haven't got a clue is that true? You don't have any thoughts? Well, I do, I do and I don't. So that I think there's a few things I know what I'm not going to do. Oh, well, that's <laughs> a good like place that. to start. You'll have to help me out a little bit because I'm not sure. Um, so maybe this is the therapy bit of the yeah. of the podcast. But so I'm getting quite freaked out about the, the climate change thing. Mm. As we all know, I've been freaked out about it for quite a while, but I'm getting a bit like, right. It's crunch time. And so things like, obviously, the Extinction Rebellion thing has come to mind. For those of you who haven't heard of it, there's a movement of people who are seriously considering acts of non-violent law-breaking in order to bring to the attention of the press and the government the fact that we're at climate crisis stage. So they're doing things like, they're ever so lovely, so they do things like graffiti buildings, but with chalk paint. (laughs) (laughs) It's the most. It's the most beautiful bit of vandalism you've ever. You know, ever a, <laughs> Westbourne Park is a tube station, one of the nearest tube stations to me, and they've just got a huge thing of really ugly, just blank walls, like painted over with different shitty shades of grey. Along, I'm like, get someone to do some graffiti in there for the love. Of, like, just make yeah, this make place feel nice. Exactly. Strange. So, so, so they, we should get them in. We Give should them get some, them in. Uh, well, what's a good paint for permanence? What's uh, spray paint made of? Evil chemicals evil that chemical. make you s- that yeah, smell. Yeah, use and those burn. so that it doesn't... <laughs> no, Michael, that's <laughs> not the idea. But because it, it gets you high as well. Yeah, but oh. the normal see it. What's the point of that? <laughs> so, God damn uh, these so people. So they're, they're like doing things like gluing their hands to windows. That's okay. one thing they've been doing. What kind anyway, of glue? They're kind of, <laughs> I don't know, it's non-solvent basically. Okay, well, that be. Yoo-hoo. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so they are, they're, they're actually using Weetabix to glue their hands. No. Gross. So, they are non-violent acts of resistance. and But anyway, the point is they're putting themselves forward to get arrested. The activists. Active, proper activists. And not, putting not, themselves... But yeah. You're not like me. In not, the 60s sense. Yeah, in the proper they're go chain yourself to railings. Up. They're going to get arrested is their uh. point. They're actually sort of putting them... It's almost like we are volunteering to get arrested. Mm. And I discussed this with my husband and we concluded that it wouldn't really be very convenient for him or my child if I went and got myself arrested. Yeah. So right now in my life, I'm not in a position to go and get arrested. No, I mean, I think that's very selfish. (laughs) Very lame. Uh, And, you know, if my child is listening to this in 20 years (laughs) time, you've got to understand (laughs) that actually you get quite upset if you don't see me for very long. Oh, if she can see out the window. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, don't be like thick it's red don't fog. Be like that. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so maybe this is my sorry. Yeah, maybe you should have got arrested, mother. <laughs> sorry. Anyway, so so the question is now, what can I do? 
and I have thought about this and I've discussed, we have done, there are many things that we have been doing for many years to mm-hmm. reduce our carbon footprint. It could always get in smaller in our house, in, mm. our, in our family, our little unit, yeah. um, you know, various things. And we do them all the time and we consider what we're doing and blah, blah, blah. But there's, you know, that's not going to, I want to do more than that. Yeah. So I don't know what to do. Look, my problem with the climate panic yeah. is activism to me still is pretty far from doing something like raising awareness to like in my kind of like I'm a developer I make things I want something to exist that didn't exist before kind of thing so when I think about trying to solve the climate I go to atmospheric nanotechnology solutions and bioprogramming DNA sequencing how are we going to actually physically solve the problems that we're facing like with technology probably because that's what I tend to do so this was one of the reasons that I kind of I, I you know my tech day thing where I did make that one of my things that I was asking people about it was always like I don't know how to fix the climate I don't know how to solve that and it, it just so, and I just do feel like I mean, we talk about it. We already talk about it. And yeah, hopefully yeah, yeah. If people, and I think hopefully if we can make this engaging enough, we kind of build up more people that are, are, are motivated to keep thinking about this stuff. And I think that's a really huge thing because for me, I wasn't doing that last year. No. You know, I was a lot more depressed coming out of Meaning Conference last year than this year. This year, it's more like a paradox of choice. Last year, it was a just complete, like, uh, I don't know. What am I going to do? Um, but you see what I mean? Like, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. activism, so we're doing the, communication. Yeah. That stuff, to me, still feels quite ephemeral and quite okay. kind of... Okay, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think what you... that the, the... Especially if the paint's not permanent. <laughs> Fairphone woman did do that. We started with awareness, mm. and that was all cool. But actually, but people asked. But we need, we need. To, yes, people you know, asked. I'm not special. Say, people want to know. Well, what are you actually doing? Yeah. yeah. So, What's that? So okay then. So we've got activism and awareness. Blah blah blah. And it's not to say that you can't go and follow Extinction Revolution on Twitter no, and Facebook no, and have a look see. at what they're doing yeah. and maybe bung them some money for you know paying the bills when they're getting arrested. But. <laughs> But so they're because they're doing a thing and they did get themselves on the they they did more for climate change, frankly, than the budget did, which didn't mention it. <laughs> and they at least got onto the front page of BBC News last week following you know our conversation about how climate change yeah. isn't on the BBC. Yeah. They got it on the website front page. So yeah, that's you know, good. so that's pretty good. That's something. Well done then. So and I don't mean that in a patronising accent. That should be more... <laughs> the tone of voice is wrong there. Well done. Brilliant. Still, you sound uh, kind of does politi- that still patronising? You sounded like a pol- politician. How about well this? Done. How well about this? How about this? How about this? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'll do. Thank you for getting some Thank you important for doing stuff on it. the front page. Thank you for doing more than I can. And, <laughs> you know, there you go. So how's that? Is that better? More sincere? <laughs> <laughs> So I've, I've, we did some polls and we found that people really uh, value sincerity. sincerity authenticity. Is authenticity. 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 That's but, it's OK. But, but what? But, so and we haven't been into detail on Fairphone, but yeah, they started from awareness. But what they did was obviously if you're going to make a mobile phone, there's no way you're solving everything at once and ever shipping anything. Right. So what they have done is broken it down and said, well, what, you know, they have this enormous grid of like different minerals, where they come from, how much conflict is involved in each different one, how many people are getting killed, Child how many people... slavery. Who's working at free, gunpoint yeah. and all, all these different kind of things. You can't solve everything, but you can certainly start from an awareness of what you're not yet solving. And maybe that's the way to kind of get from nothing to something is go okay well i under i've i've figured out what the problem space is and i've mapped out where the here's what i want to do yeah let's map out the problem space see where the opportunities are and then start to be moving in the right direction because there's nothing like moving in the right direction for kind of motivation it's like yeah. as soon when as soon as you feel you can have a little bit of hope a little bit of progress you can't solve everything in one go so um I, I, did, I did enjoy seeing a computer monitor being used as a bin to collect. I mean, they, 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 you know, here's something to be aware of, like power supplies, the copper gets recycled, but how it gets recycled is uh, they just kind of collect them all, stick it in a bucket, a.k.a. a big CRT monitor, um, burn all the plastic off, and then they get all this copper, which they can then sell and reuse. But it's like, well, I'm not sure that's necessarily the most ecological way of doing that but you know <laughs> it's an interesting visual anyway how does it get recycled if you send it locally how I, does well this is a huge this is again something that came up 
And the thing is, uh, we don't know what happens with recycling. We've got this idea that we stick stuff in the recycling, something better is going to happen. A lot of the time it doesn't. Uh, A lot of the time, you know, different plastics in different areas may or may not be recyclable. The idea, I mean, I had a bit of, I don't know if I'll I had a bit of an argument with Sharon the other week about... She'd like there was a coffee jar and the like and it's happened a couple of times. There's a coffee jar that I quite like and I'd been I I wanted to reuse and she'd put it in the recycling, but she'd taken the cap off and put the cap in the main bin and like the jar in the recycling bin, and and you know it's, it's like oh well that's not recyclable and this is and I'm sort of like trying to make the argument that. To me, it's now it's definitely not recyclable to me. <laughs> right? Now I can't practically right now recycle and reuse this thing. So I feel like not everything's about doing some mysterious secret recycling process that you no. don't understand and you never see. Sometimes it's like, well, they could have, I could have used that again. We are so divorced from what the practicalities of recycling actually well, yeah. involve oh. that it's... Uh, I, di- I did have, uh, when I was doing that contract at the council, somebody was telling me how, you know, yoghurt pots are only X percent of... Da, da. I was like, can't we go in and do a video of how the recycling yeah. works and show it to the citizens so they understand why your yoghurt pot can't go into your yeah, recycling. Yeah, I just want to see like, what goes on in there. Just tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, but, you know, but on the subject of the technology thing, like I mentioned to you yesterday, I've got a cardboard box at home of electronics that some of them need their hard drives wiped and stuff. Mm. But then I've now collected this, like every cable that I know I'm never going to use, yeah. every like random cheapo headphones that turned up with something, they're all in there. And it's just sitting in the corner of the office, becoming a bigger pile of things. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, and I don't want to put it in the bin. And I, I'm not confident enough to take it up to the skip and put it in the electricals bit. Really? Because I'm not, not entirely sure what's going to happen well, to it. Well, the thing is with, and, and I, you know, over the years, obviously, I accumulated an awful lot of hardware. And once I had my little sister come, I was like, I, it's just such, I just need some help dealing with all of this and figuring yeah. it all out. And the solution was, oh, well, you've just got to throw all this stuff away. away. Yeah. <laughs> There's no... There's so, no like, we aren't. We, we have a footprint. We do have to throw stuff away. You can't just hold on to it and hold no. it indefinitely. <laughs> no. And it is a huge problem that modern appliances and devices are not repairable, are not reusable. You can't plug in some old cable. You can't really use that for anything no. now. Like, I no. can't use a five-pin DIN plug for very much these days. No, I've got, I have got one laptop where this the 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 lid cracked but mm. it didn't actually damage the screen or the electronics right. it just it just cracked and so now you can't lift and lower the lid right it's just it's impractical and i tried on ebay i ordered i went to the extent of ordering a broken version of that same laptop right. which right. i paid some money for because i thought oh, i'll just be able to sort the screen but the thing that i ended up getting i just looked at it i was like <sighs> I can't fix this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make this marry onto that. Even though there were screws, you know, you, in theory, in theory, like, in theory it, maybe, possibly, but it's just someone broken. who's very interesting on the subject of repair and gets into fights with Apple every so often yeah. over is this guy Lewis Rosman, who has quite an interesting YouTube channel where he shows you the process of. Like repairing surface mount technology, so he's got like a twenty grand like microscope that he can yeah. zoom right in, and he can he can he shows you. Look, Apple will make you pay four hundred dollars to replace the entire logic board to fix it. I just looked at it under, and I can see that that thing's burnt out, and it's kind of obvious. And I can just replace it. Um, and they he'd done something, but then they'd they'd sort of like. Um, customs had impounded some parts, but some old was it some old iPhone batteries or iPod batteries even or something they just impounded them and it's basically Apple it seemed like Apple would just had just like kind of stepped in and gone you know and I, on the one hand I understand why Apple do that because my I got my screen repaired on my iPhone 7 by a sort of third party thing and it's it's not been the same <laughs> it's never been the same. Siri doesn't hey Siri anymore. I've noticed that like the when you record sound with some apps, it's just there's no sound. It's kind of completely messed up. The right. colours aren't really right. And, you know, obviously Apple are trying to protect their brand and that's important to them. But like the fact that so much technology is that could, could be repaired yeah. perfectly fine. Uh, Apple, I, I feel like they're more worried about incompetent repairs 
And I, I get like that you don't want incompetent repairs undermining everything, but like let someone that has proven himself and let people that have proven themselves to do it. Even, but I mean, that's what their certification thing is all about, mm. isn't it? But I. But then if you're certified, that then you have to send the logic board back for something that you know Could how do. to repair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fairphone. Fairphone was interesting to me yes. because the thing I am most interested in... Did I say this already? I did, didn't I? I, I kind of want to make some little gadgets, some little music toys, some little music things. And I, I did think... Yeah, kind of the things I did right in big. When it comes to that technology, it comes to those things, upgradable and repairable devices would be a really great thing to start giving a bit more prominence. Even to the point I was looking at this, the Fairphone going, maybe, maybe, can I, could I, could I get one of those? Could I use, could I live with one of those? You know, I've been an Apple developer for over 10 years and I've always prized, A, the fact that they control the entire, the hardware and the software and their architecture of their operating system is really, really good. Right, their frameworks are really, really, especially if you compare them to, you know, I've seen what it could be. I've seen what it looks like when you just haven't got anything. <laughs> like yeah, Ubuntu yeah. was like that. And we did really try to kind of start shifting the tide on that. Like maybe there should be an SDK that lets you write apps for this operating system. Then it would be useful. It wouldn't just be like the three guys that know how to write a yeah. photo editing app. It would be a whole world of software developers that feel like it might be a lucrative platform to develop for. But Apple have always done a great job of that. And one of the things I realised working at Canonical was they stuff I'm realising now as I'm trying to help solve this problem, they have known for 15 years and now it's paying off. So all the sort of underlying innards of how iOS works and like its predecessors, there was a lot of smart decisions made and a lot of experiences going into that that isn't present in Android. Like Android, they've tried to sort of... I, I'm going to try and explain this in a way that it doesn't need to be edited out for being too <laughs> technical. Um, the foundation on which Android software is built can never be as fast and of the same quality that the Apple stuff can deliver just because of the way it's put together in the foundations. It's just it's the decisions they've made are towards slightly different ends. Apple have always had this thing of they have never sacrificed performance at any stage of the design of their things. They always want to make sure that you are as performant and as close to the metal as possible. They care about how many CPU cycles something takes, whatever it is. Whereas the stuff that Android runs on is a compromise in that regard. Anyway, my point is, I've, I've always liked Apple for that reason, but we are reaching a point where it's sort of diminishing returns doing that and actually you can get away with. It's funny because like early Android phones to compete with Apple products had to be much more powerful. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, um, and yeah, so this is the only way to do it if you don't kind of control that thing. But Oh, fuck, I don't know what my point is because I was just, I was just started nerding out <laughs> about you know Apple. <laughs> you were talking about whether or not you could get a Fairphone. We need to step back from that. Like, I don't need a thinner phone. No. I haven't needed a thinner, smaller phone for a long time. No, in fact, they're getting bigger. <laughs> yeah, I do, we don't need... I, I want a phone with a bolt on each corner that I can unscrew. Like, I, I watch this channel, Look Mum No Computer, and he kind of like fixes old music gear, and you see, and he always shows you the older stuff, and it's like, yeah, this was designed to kind of hinge off, and it's yes, got these yes, big yeah. lugging things, and yeah. like the idea was that you could get into it, and often because a lot of this stuff came out of hobbyist communities. Well, the, but this is the thing about the, uh, you know, I used to repair things. Mm, yeah. You know, you could repair them, and you could go in, you could buy spare parts. You could buy cogs and levers yep. and things, and it was made. To, did it even had arrows to unscrew this yeah. <laughs> and then this? <laughs> it was quite easy. And then slowly, slowly, you started getting like special screwdrivers. Yeah. So if you didn't have the special screwdriver that only Sony had, mm. you couldn't get in. Yeah. Well, and then it got to a point where actually to fix this telly, you just need to replace this whole 
board right. instead of those two capacitors. So it's just become harder and harder to mend the new stuff. And I think a lot of that is down to the sort of, and I mean, if you take the, you know, you said you don't need a thinner phone. Who walks around with their phone not in a case? So you're not mm. even... Mine, my case is too rubbery and I don't like getting it in and out of my pocket. But so, but you know, it's, it's like... A very a, tight trousers. But what my point, my point... Okay, Michael has just <laughs> ruined my point. Sorry. <laughs> my point is that they spend all this effort. Like, I know that to get the apple engraved on the back of these phones has required some PhD in bloody lasers. Mm. Yet most of us hide the actual physical device in a case. So we're not even benefiting from the beauty. I just need to distance myself from Ivanka on this point because I don't <laughs> like phone cases. Well, I don't like I phone just cases. Make a beautiful I... object, really. Ugly. Like this. Mine's re- My case is particularly ugly, by the way. It's but, for that exact reason. I'm like, why are you covering up but this listen, exquisite but, engineering? But listen, <laughs> but listen to your exquisite engineering. I, I went through a phase of not having a case, yeah. but then I smashed my screen. And then I was like, mm, this is like a million pounds worth of phone. Yeah. I am not doing that anymore. So there's a point about perhaps about valuing something more than these consumer aesthetics that yes. we're told to value. We need to evolve in our values beyond... who is Whose values are these as well? Are they the consumer values? Are they... I was saying, talking about like tweet-driven development, talking about... Um, tweet-driven development. Like what's a thing that you can tweet out that people will engage with that, that is a product you can... What can you say that you're doing and start from there? And I think Apple do this really well. They... They know what their slides are going to be when they present this thing. Thinnest iPhone ever. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Fastest. They they need. Yes. They want the reason they get to, their marketing is so good is they sort of. I think they almost decide what they want those tent pole yeah, yeah. short statements to be, and then they figure out how the hell to make that true. Whereas if you just let it all kind of bubble up from how the technology works, you try you start trying to explain all these concepts and difficult yeah, yeah, things, yeah. but which does lead to a certain type of values. As well, it's like thin is something you can sell. It's thinner. But like at a certain point, it's like, well, I don't want it to be thinner. But what what can, they do pitch stuff on, we are the most environmentally friendly phone yeah. that exists, right? They, that's one of their slides. Is it? Yeah. Like we do the most. They do. They do. Um, they like, do. They've got an actual chief environment officer yeah. person. And, and whatever. Had it for a number of years. You know, whatever that means in real terms, it's like they want yeah. to be able to say that. And yeah, it actually, yeah. to be probably because there's not much competition. Right. No, now, I mean, they Fairphone can. put up that slide yesterday where Fairphone is the greenest and then Apple's just behind it and then everyone else lines up behind down to really naughty ones. I don't have the slide. Just because where my brain is at the moment is I'd quite like to make a physical product. And and the way to do that in a 21st century business way is to be thinking about repairability and being able to, you know, the fair thing, yeah, you can yeah, switch what? the camera module for a better one, like as the technology improves. But like the, the shell doesn't really need to be replaced all the time. But then, yeah, this kind of just mapping out your problem space and just really figuring out, just visualising your minute progress so one thing you made me think of is my van, right? <laughs> which is a 2003 Volkswagen T4 van. Mm, 2003, and, uh, you say? Yeah, 2003, 15. which means that it... And it's a diesel van, I know. Um, but it is repairable. Yeah. And anywhere I go, it is repairable by a, by a capable mechanic who doesn't need to have a computer to plug <laughs> into the computer mm. of the van and have the right software and none of that. And so... That isn't necessarily a reason to keep the van, uh, but maybe it is. I don't know. And you know that everyone talks about the most environmentally friendly product you have is the one you've already bought. Yeah, yeah, and so I do have this, I have this kind of turmoil with my van, of, even though I know it's a diesel van, it is very repairable. It is old now. It blah, blah. I don't know. I don't know how you weigh up carbon footprint of the manufacturing process yeah. and the ownership process against the carbon f- or the, the pollution footprint of the exhaust fumes. I don't know. But anyway, so I have this thing of things that can be fixed. But then is this upfront 
price you have to pay for things generally if they're going to mm. be more repairable or if you take it to close. I got my sewing machine out the other day and fixed Nick's jeans. Yeah. Right. We could have just bin them and bought some new jeans. I was like, yeah. no, come on. We've got, I used to do patches on jeans all the time. Yeah. We can do this. And maybe we don't need to go down the road of repairability but all the way. But necessarily that. It's, it's also like low quality. Just going back to the ragged trousered philanthropists, the one thing that compounds inequality is not being able to afford the good quality yes, version yes, of something yes. that lasts in the first yeah, place. Yeah, you yeah, have to yeah, buy yeah. the cheap stuff that yeah, lasts yeah. less time. You end up paying more. And it is expected. Like if you buy the thing that, you know, the, the, the leather bag that can be sewn back together very easily is more robust it's going to be more money or I don't know yeah. if leather bags are a good yeah. example in this well. day and age <laughs> but you know I only like, use so mushroom the, leather the, the good quality is more expensive the more the upfront cost is a barrier to buying yeah. stuff that will last longer yeah. and, and there are like in terms of like doing mm. a world of doing and what could you do yeah. um, there are already things like repair cafes and there are yeah. repair reuse and recycle initiatives that one could become more engaged with and mm. more involved with I don't know teaching... and you can go to ifixit.com as well oh, is yeah, a very good you? place to like ifixit they're becoming more about like comparing companies on how well they're doing at repairability. Ah, so but they're also see. guides on how to fix a thing and they sell you the bit. Like even I had this like synth, this yeah. little synth thing and I could go there, buy the replacement little bit from there and there was a little guide and they gave you the right screwdriver for it and that's their whole thing. So that's a really good thing to so look at. So there's a kind of product value that is repairability that yeah, you can start yeah. asking about. Okay, so that's a world to explore. I need to borrow a fiver By the way, I think your eyes are kind of nice You might think I'm crazy Crazy, you might think I'm crazy talking about the fair phone mapping thing yeah so if i were to map out my life against yeah. i don't know the un sustainability goals for example for example <laughs> i don't know or, or the you know the donor economics or something so i map out my life so i've got because mm. one of the things that did happen yesterday is we were talking to somebody who the way they think about their career is clearly very different to how I think about my career in yeah. terms of like conventional paths. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, so let's say you added, you know, you had career, you had family, you had transport. What were they talking about yesterday? The forest green rovers. Uh, energy, transport and yeah. food. So you've got like, you know, your sources of energy, your, how you get places and what you eat are the three main things you could change. So if you did that in your life, maybe helping people create some sort of matrix where you can evaluate where you do all those things. I think they're comparing. I mean, they've already kind of pitched this, but I'm starting to kind of clarify what it might look like. <laughs> but if you could sort of, I think... If you're comparing it with 12-year deadline of climate apocalypse, it's yeah. always going to be diminishingly small. But if you compare it to the next person over, then you might actually kind of get into the winning. competition a bit. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, and I think that can be yeah. motivating. And, and then you can start to build movement around that. And you know, it's like that's, that's another one of the ideas in my flipping endless list of possible things to do. Because I think, you know, if you look at your... Because if you look at energy, in my world, we have a, an office at home with a couple of computers and da, 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 but we mm. used to have the, you know, the entertainment energy use and yeah. the washing energy use and the getting places energy use and the blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then you've got your work. Who do you work for? Do, mm -hmm. What's their energy? So you could actually yeah, expand, you know, it beyond, expand it beyond yourself. So but you it's start, all the choices you've made of who yeah. you work for. and yeah, so. yeah, so you go, right, I'm sorry, I can't come and work for you because you 
I don't know, coal power your heating system. <laughs> yeah, and got a recycling bin in the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. Not that anyone doesn't have these things, but you could it could maybe help us start evaluating. You know how you have that, what's it called, glass door? One of those websites where you can go and the, the people that work there give a review of what it's like to work for a company. You go in and then you've got someone going, yeah, yeah, they are nice. They do say what they want. Don't ever go and work there. The management are mental. Mm. Blah, blah. And you get these sort of reviews. So you get them. But then add to that the, you know, yes, they say that they're environmentally mm. sound, but actually, so you could expand your evaluation beyond yourself to the company. Yeah. Okay, I, buy, I always buy vegetables, but I buy them from BP. <laughs> yeah. so, or, you know, I don't know. So maybe something that's a bit more, you know, how could we borrow the things that everyone did seem to be doing with these good companies, which yeah. is taking a path and then working out how to make the path cleaner, better, mm. Because even Forest Green Rovers started with, mind you, they just did everything. They could afford to just do everything is what I gathered. If you can sort of choose a smaller domain, then maybe you can do a lot more yeah. in that. And which is quite good because it's press worthy then as well. It's People can talk about it because it's a coherent thing where it's harder to write a blog post, a, a new a independent article about how one of your things in the grid of 57 things was slightly yeah. improved this month. Yeah, yeah, because it's like Fairphone, by doing what they've done, they've got the first fair trade gold. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. That, that was, was nice. And that was, that's then a story. Like, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. They, and other people then, then the people are sort of selling the gold, mining the gold. Now they've got a USP in a competitive yeah. market that sort of goes a bit beyond the normal yeah. stuff. And it does, it does. I do believe that the better you do, the more, like, everyone benefits. Yeah. But that said, th what we're talking about, the kind of comparison and l personal impact was sort of like I'd been thinking about that. But then I had gone to the other end of that to who are the people with the most power? Really, if they were just doing a better job, yeah. that would have so much more impact. So I thought, well, I'd, I'd quite like this. What am I doing? How am I improving myself? But I'd like Jeff Bezos to be evaluating himself against these goals. Yeah. That's someone that can just like flick his wrist and change you know, yeah, and a I, lot. Yeah. But yeah, there's I, I think that's thing. the thing about like energy. Let, I'm told let's... they don't like to be pitted against each other, these ultra wealthy people. Wow, they could pit themselves against the rest of us. We should be at a point in the not too distant future where you can only buy clean energy from a sustainable company. Well, I, that's what I was thinking when we we're talking about quality of product. Well, we should just have a minimum allowed quality of product in a way. Like, I d I'm sure I told. People... I'm sure I told you this story on the on the podcast about Southern Water phoning me up for market research purposes. Did I tell you this? No, no. And they were like, so would you do some market research? Yeah, sure. Okay, what, what's the question? Um, how much do you think the fine should be if Southern Water's water quality doesn't meet the minimum standards? And I was like, I don't agree with the question. <laughs> I was like, Southern Water should never in 2018 in Brighton be sending me water that doesn't meet the required minimum hmm. standards of clean water. She was like, yeah, but if they did, I was like, Trillion let me pounds. just let me just repeat my answer. I was like, <laughs> I find it unacceptable that in 2018 I'm even having this conversation with yeah. you. It's not a financial punishment. It's just don't do it. Yeah. Like, how can you be doing this? This is not new technology. Yeah. Don't send me dirty water. <laughs> One trillion. And I was like, also, you should screen your participants better because <laughs> as, a, as a researcher, I would screen me out. <laughs> but, you know, it's that sort of, you know, you, you can't say to somebody, oh, we've improved workers' rights now. We don't actually enslave them. Mm. Brilliant. Well done. Nice one. Actually, that's not enough in 2018. And I think this line, 21st century business, yeah, yeah. is a good line. Yeah, it's it's like, good one. Which needs to be said over and over. Because, you, you know, I look at all these plastic free groups and all this stuff on Facebook and everyone's just trying really hard but there's no collective reporting there's no way of going here, here we all are here's what we found out here's where you could actually persuade us 
to, to go. The nobody's listening who has an opportunity to make a decision. Mm. I don't think. You know what you know what I mean? It's yeah. Like, well, yeah. And well, and the, the the whole echo chamber thing of you know meaning conference perhaps yeah. itself. It's like well, someone today at that meetup this morning said like she goes to all the different meetups around Brighton. It's always the same people. It's like yeah. how the hell are we going to start talking to the people outside uh, of our yeah. bubble and kind of getting them to pay attention? And this was one of the, you know I brought someone from outside our bubble yesterday did, to the yeah, conference yeah. and we're just to I you know I don't know if he enjoyed it or not but I just think I just you know I could s- sense that maybe he was searching for something and maybe in the wrong places and just wanted to sort of like sometimes it's one person at a time that you think yeah, maybe yeah. has the potential to kind of like get involved and, uh, to be honest like I would put myself in that category a year ago I was just like I wasn't I mean yeah because in the last couple of years I've been a bit more Okay, you can't really ignore these problems. But after last year, yeah, it's definitely motivating to start actually engaging and starting a podcast, for instance. Can I talk about modules? If you insist, do tell us about well, modules, no, Michael. This is, this is more me trying to solve a technological problem, and just I just wanted to have a little discussion about it. We're not going to stop. We don't want to stop. Think technology getting smaller and faster and better and more efficient. But I feel like if you could just compose these devices from more generic components. So for me, day to day, that means I've got a load of these Arduino Nanos, which is this tiny little kind of programmable board with a few inputs and outputs that you can like detect the voltage on and kind of do things. And in my particular sphere, that's sort of musical things. But yeah, Apple make a big noise about, you know, they make their own chips, they make their own things, but they're, they're never going to make something that's compatible with anything else. But like we really need to start making the components of our gadgets, if we can't stop them getting smaller, at least kind of encapsulate the individual parts of them in such a way that one thing could be replaced or reprogrammed. Or like I could take a little module from my microwave and put it in my phone. That's what I'm kind of imagining here. I mean, I think that kind of explains it, right? This is a type of module that can connect to any other type of thing. You can make something do something much better just by changing the software on it most of the time. Um, Unless you're Microsoft. (laughs) 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 Um, Oh, oh, nerds. (laughs) Um, (laughs) If I could reuse any component from my gadget in any other gadget, I think would be a really good way of kind of getting onto the right path with repairability and yeah i mean yeah i suppose phone chargers have got better mm, Vaguely, but, but, but then you sort of need like far too many cables uh yes yeah i think we need you know the, but it's the same principle it's standard yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's standard yeah. yeah so apple do seem to change their connectors way too much way too fucking often yeah and that is very irritating mm. <laughs> for those of us who have, for anyone, I think, in the whole world. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody. Nobody benefits from that but no. Apple. What do they get? It. Why have they done this? What's the rationale for this latest no, I think that's how they make a lot of their money. Like, but, but I... But like, they, that, look, how they can they still a, score they w- so green when they're making... They want to make a thinner, smaller laptop. And I do not want a thinner, smaller laptop. <laughs> I want a laptop that I can plug into my other stuff I want still. a laptop that I can record the podcast on and the fan doesn't stop. Yeah, like what is... Don't stop making... I know thin looks good on a slide, but enough is enough. And, yeah. and that's the reason... Yeah, they got rid of the headphone jack. They got... Yeah, yeah, And yes, yeah. Bluetooth... Okay, fine, I've got Bluetooth headphones now. And yeah, it's pretty good. Like, okay, fine, you can make these things. And now it can be waterproof, right? So in a way that has knock-on effects. But I don't know, like... I don't know. I don't know. I thought what you maybe were going to say was like... Yeah, things on, tell ever, me what you thought I was going to say. Well, if, ever, if everything's made of generic components, where's my IP? What am I supposed yeah, to sell? Well, it was a bit of like, how do you avoid Intellectual getting a sort of property. like... Intellectual property. Actually, I was, it was more about innovation. 
Mm. Like so, so we're innovating at the moment, which is actually so. What I was doing was channeling the oh well, if everyone has to use the the same connectors and the same stuff, how are we going to innovate and differentiate, and are we going to stagnate and words like that that end in eight? But actually, in the same thing about that conscious capitalism business and having to be more creative, so like we need to innovate in new ways. So instead of it being yes. about thinner, we've got to force the market yeah. to compete on repairability, yeah. on sustainability, on words that end in illity, not, not in eight. Okay. <laughs> I think differentiation is a... It's a... So the fucker, really. <laughs> yeah, but different... Because people don't remember anything that isn't different. And, and the whole thing they teach in business is like... You've differentiate. Got to make your, differentiate your product so yeah, that people remember it. on like... something more clever than how thin it is. Mm, that's no, the point, you know, clever. if it's like... like <laughs> That is pretty clever. But, you know, your watch that you've got, yeah. your activity tracking yeah. watch, the charge lasts... 25 days. 25 days. And it just tells me the time. I don't need 27 different, different watch, watch faces. What is the matter with you? I don't need a choice of watch faces. I just need one that I like. It's got a little display on it. It tells me how far I've walked. But whereas mine, I have to charge every night. Oh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't. Things. Or um, like late afternoon, usually, for me. My, on mine <laughs> does last till I get to bed. Mine was a bit older, so... Unless I do too many activities, mm -hmm. which I want to track, then, you know, it ruins mm -hmm. it. Every year I pray that Apple will promote an increase in battery life. <laughs> every year. It's and it's still the same shitty battery life. You know, how many years do we have to go through until they say, and now, and finally, it's lasts finally. three days? And we'll just not mention the fact that it's not thinner. <laughs> Let's talk about this phone that you don't have to charge on your way home from the office <laughs> in order to listen to a or panic, remind yourself to charge it up before you leave the office so that you can listen to a podcast on the way home. My phone is mm. at 29%. What time is it now? It is 13.56. My, it's my, an outrage because I knew I was going to be out and about today, so I brought my little extra fucking Apple battery pack thing. My extra device that I needed to buy in order to keep my device alive. Four hundred pounds, <laughs> and it's for an iPhone six, so the camera doesn't line up with the hole of the <laughs> iPhone seven. I was just relieved that it didn't say this accessory is not supported by this device when I plugged it in. Like that's the things I'm grateful for at this point. Yeah. You haven't with software made this thing that definitely would work, not work. So um, so what are we gonna do though? What are we gonna oh, what do? What the fuck are we gonna do? <laughs> I don't know. What are we gonna do? Here um, a, a lens we can what put. What shall I do, look, Michael? A lens, Tell a lens, me. A lens I'm gonna put because we, and also we haven't talked about it because you, you didn't you didn't come to this one. But another lens we can always put on these things. Go on. Uh, Poppy Jarman. Jamin, Jamin. She leads a thing called Mental Health First Aid, which is helping people not commit suicide and stuff. And it's addressing all those things of mental illness and, you know, all the things that we talk about, the, the taboos and access and all this thing. Her story was uh, she... Um, I don't, I, don't, I don't want to sort of summarise the feeling out of it, but she was very forceful, willful, independent, intelligent. So, of course, she they were like, oh, well, we better marry you off now then. So she sort of, like, got pushed into an arranged marriage, ended up being a single mother, like, and that sort of being sort of a bit eschewed by, you know, both sides and everyone that was kind of supposed to be looking after her and caring about her. And she, you know, and then she sort of told the story of this moment that she was just, something had just happened and she, she was walking along the beach and she fell over and this stranger came over, this man, that, and just said, Look, I, I, are you OK? I notice you fell over and you're crying. <laughs> um, OK, well, I didn't explain the story out of that because I've ruined my hair. Uh... <laughs> You um, didn't, yeah, you didn't explain the emotion out of that because <laughs> he's got you. Yeah, so um, <laughs> that and a couple of other random acts of kindness kind of got her onto the right path and she sort of now created this thing and she was able to say, and this money, people, this much money, this, you know, this, it's had this impact. Some interesting things about that, like as a man between 20 and 49, you are most likely to die of suicide now. This is the biggest killer. One person every 40 seconds commits suicide. One person every, in yeah. the UK, in, in the, the world, world? In the world, in the I world. think. £99 billion pounds a year are lost 
from uh, like mental health problems in the workplace, just like people stress and, and all these things. Yeah. Um, only 40% of people need help get help. Apparently, I don't know how you get to that number. And they've, you know, asked the question, is the bottom line always financial? But mental health has always been the sort of like ugly stepbrother of physical health. Yeah. It's never quite taken seriously in the same way. But what she did say is large corporations know mental health is important and they get these big corporations coming to them asking, like, what can we do? Because they're losing money to it. Yeah, yeah. And... um. And, you know, when I was giving examples of that geezer that came up to me at the conference going, ah, oh, these uh, millennials. The other one was, ah, oh, these people claiming mental health incapacity benefit, they're just skiving off work. And I made that point of if you are not mentally ill in this world, there's something wrong. This world makes people crazy. And it's not the people. And that was actually like a point of capitalist realism. My, my friends who died, uh, Mark Fisher, who actually did commit suicide the year before last, and he'd written this book. He was an academic in uh, Goldsmiths, but he wrote a book. One of his points was, we want to blame the individuals. We don't look at the context when it comes to mental illness. We kind of look at the individual and medicate. But you've got to look at the world. You've got to yeah. look at why people are on the street homeless, be yeah. not because that, that, of yeah. some mistake they've made. Yeah. People, you know, choose drugs because it's the only thing that gives that, them anything and that's not their fault. People are on incapacity benefit because they're surplus to requirements. They don't, their lives don't have any meaning and what are you going to say to that person? Yeah, there's more people claiming it. Yeah, because more people are suffering from it. Not because everyone's just like, you know, my oh, dad okay. claimed it for years. Like I was put, you know, I wouldn't be here without mental health kind of incapacity benefits. Well, I'd be here, but I'd have, I don't know. I don't know. It'd be different. I don't know where I don't you'd know. be. I would have, it would have been a lot more kind That's of That's exactly turmoil. what this researcher that I interviewed said the other week, because he's a clinical psychiatrist or psychologist. Mm. He's a clinical psychologist working with homelessness. And he said one of the things that makes it difficult for him to get funding yeah. is a lot of the funding is about of funding into medicine. He's like, I'm not treating psychosis or some mental health disease that needs yeah. a pill. I am treating a set of very complex circumstances that have brought somebody to be homeless, sleeping on the street. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, yes, I do need to treat their mental health issues, but I also need to start working on addressing child poverty. Child poverty apparently is a massive indicator in mental health. He said, well, he's not able to understand at the moment, which perhaps Poppy's got some answers mm. to, is this, why did this person, because he said people either end up rough sleeping on the street or with mental health help. Mm. And he doesn't understand how this person got help mm. and this person didn't get help. Like what were the complex set of circumstances or personality or DNA? or? And he said, you know, that, that led this person to get help and this not. So the 40%, you know, only 40% who need help get help yeah. number totally resonates with this. Sometimes the, the, the help, we, you know, we both know that not the same therapist isn't right for every person. No. And like I only, through luck, happened to kind of meet someone that worked for me. Like... I think it's possible one, a bad experience with a therapist can be very damaging to your yep. chances of recovery and not all therapists are created equal, not all of them. And they can be tired, they can make a mistake, they can forget something you told them that you and that can change the entire dynamic of your relationship. But so yeah, it's very complicated and it's not just about it's not about the individual, it's about the environment. That, yeah, 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 that, the know, context. The yeah, that yeah, yeah. To them. What I was asking myself was, you know, I, I see a homeless person. You know, I come to Hammersmith, I see the sort of little gangs of, you know, the people kind of sitting and, you know, drinking in the day or just under their thing. I'm like, well, obviously I can't do anything about all that, but have I even ever sat down next to one of them and just, like, the talked to them? Maybe they could... I mean, my, my wider point is the ripples of something small can be huge like a small thing and in her case it was this person just coming over and like that helped kind of turn turn everything around and now she's created this huge thing that helps thousands of people every day right not everything has to be i mean maybe i'm just telling myself i don't have to send nanotechnology robots up into the atmosphere to make a difference like i could just sit down with one <laughs> One person tomorrow. <laughs> on I could just, well, not tomorrow because I'm not in Hammersmith. But on Monday, like I could at lunchtime just 
sit down, say, oh, yeah, yeah, I used to drink a lot. Like, you know, what do you like doing? Why, why you know, why do you do it? What's What happened? So, I don't know, spend 20 minutes talking to someone. If they're open, like, I, I, I'm not going to... I don't I don't like that, like, squat and talk to someone, like, that yeah. kind of that dynamic where you see... So, I think to do it right, I would want to sit... So is someone sitting here sort of thing? Can I yeah, sit yeah, down yeah. here, do you mind? And then, I don't know, I mean, I'm... Uh, I've never done it once and just to see the the effects that that can have. And maybe that means that this podcast is it does have echoes. I'd like to, you know, maybe we can have echoes in small things and maybe we don't have to start from the grandiose thing. Maybe we can start from the thing we want to do and just do it right. Yeah, maybe that's what a series do is about. It's like every week you have to just do a thing. Right. Do a thing right. Do do a thing right. Do, do or a do a thing. thing that, no, we that's could report like, on our community yeah, activism. Yeah, it's like, it's like we? yeah. Just what kind did of we go, do this what did, week? What did I do this week? I this do. week, no, I. That's... And maybe even if we start by promising, like even coming up with a, you know, if you do get Hammersmith on Monday mm. and sit down next to somebody and have a conversation, yeah. you know, that's the thing that you've got back. to report back on. And I, you know, I've got to think of something. I'm, I'm going to not get arrested. <laughs> I've got to do something. So I don't know if we can come up with it ahead of time. Yeah, but I reporting don't know. back every week for starters, we can certainly, we could certainly commit to doing one thing. I mean, the, the, that idea terrifies me. I hate it, which means we should probably do it. <laughs> but actually, you know, the ripple effect isn't a bad one, and in doing that, we might discover something that we enjoy doing. Because I think, you know, yeah, you could do grids yes. of sustainability impact, and we could pick a product, any product, frankly, and yeah. try and eat our own, you know, yeah. eat, do this, try it. Yeah. Even making a website that does something, because it doesn't have to be a product that we wouldn't normally, you know. So we could pick a product and we could come up with a way of judging yourself against your yeah. friends or a framework. But actually, if Gary Mead from Wales was a happier person, he probably wouldn't be so nihilistic in his attitude yeah. towards politics. Someone and actually, would listen to him. Yeah, it, I'd be helping people's mental health because one thing that is going to be difficult in this world of change because change is coming yeah. is that change is very uncomfortable and makes more unhappy people and it's yeah. much it's much harder to be you know I am personally doing my best not to be depressed <laughs> mm-hmm. you know I've brought a kid into the world I you know I've got you know it's impossible yeah. for me to not look at it that way and I know it's nephews and nieces and cousins and neighbours and all that I don't want to go I'm a mother and therefore mm-hmm. because I know that's annoying mm-hmm. but it is like what the fuck am I doing <laughs> <laughs> so I think trying to help other people be happy or at least not be suffering is no bad aim well, if we can report back, well, we are, this is what we did this week. What we, did you do this week? <laughs> yeah. And like, I don't know, like maybe we can, we can tell stories if people hashtag, have stories of maybe we, hashtag maybe series do. If you've got, <laughs> I'll do it, I'll go for it. Series do, season do. Season um, do, sorry, sorry. Season do, hashtag season do. Listen, like if you've done something, like join in, give us, make us look bad, yeah. frankly. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, want, we want to hear what you've yeah. What you did this week, and we want to just, yeah, like, like maybe we can have a segment. What did you do? Well, let's hear some stories, and I think that could be, that could be a purpose. Yeah. Yeah, grassroots, oh. and it's 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 doable. It's a step. Yeah. On something we're already doing. we have. To, I don't have to build an app. I don't have to do anything. It's like. Yeah, but I do expect a dashboard that's going to be looking for. How, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, probably one week I will be like, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> that's it then. So, yeah, that's uh, episode one of season two of Michael and Ivanka's Grand Podcast. <laughs> you know it's amazing. <laughs> we don't even care. If you like the podcast, come to grandpodcast.com and email us your thing that you did this week to hello at grandpodcast.com and we'll tell everyone. And you will look awesome. You can be anonymous if you want. Personally, I believe that telling people how amazing you are doesn't detract if you actually did something amazing. No. Uh, that's just my philosophy. I know it's not held by everyone, but I mean, I think like um, altruism doesn't have to be secret. 
to be altruism. Where can people find you, Ivanka? Can we do a league I, table? No. Yes. You, you can find me at Ivanka on Twitter. And you can find me at michaelforestmusic.com and listen to some music. Do some reviews. That's always good. Write some reviews. Tell your friends. As I said to one of our mutual friends yesterday, you don't have to listen to the podcast. You can still tell people about it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not a podcast person, that is totally cool. If you haven't got time, you've only listened to two, but if you do meet Fine. a podcast person, yeah, tell have you them. heard of this one? It's great. <laughs> it's, really, it's actually really good. Yeah, do that. All um, right. In their squeaky voice. That's actually quite good. Yeah, and write us some five-star reviews. Yeah, uh, if, only if you want, only if you think it's worth it. Um, no, do. If you do. want to be my friend. <laughs> you want to be our friend. Friends of the podcast. <laughs> Give a good five-star reviews. And subscribe. Oh, God, I hate being told look if you're going to subscribe if you've not subscribed it's because you don't know about subscribing or you don't like it so <laughs> if you don't know about subscribing subscribe if you're not going to subscribe anyway then mm, that's fine <laughs> keep listening until you feel like subscribing but for now <laughs> see you next time bye 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 bye, bye. goodbye bye.